It's a bull again. Wow. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lockerdale by the Sea. As you heard, I rolled my coin as I do every morning when I start this show. Uh, I tried to tone down the volume for some of you folks that have got headphones on. I think I was driving a few of you nuts. Sorry about that. Uh, let me know how it sounded this time. Uh, and we got a, a bull again. Uh, I tell you something really odd. The, the coin flipping thing in the morning is is just more for fun. I have a uh, silver, large silver coin here that has a bear on one side that says uh, market decision maker. And on the other side, I used to film it and um, put it in the clips but a little too difficult to do that to put that in so you just hear me roll it in the mornings now uh, market decision makers uh, but the odd thing about that again it's just for fun just for fun but the odd thing is last Monday since last Monday this thing has pretty much been rolling nothing but bull every morning in fact on a Monday I, I had to reshoot because of some technical uh, errors that I had here I had to uh, redo this video like five times and the coin kept coming up bull 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 I don't know if something's trying to tell us something but I don't believe in that hope Focus, focus again this is for fun but take it for what it's worth I am just seeing nothing but bulls on this coin uh, what a lovely day out there I kind of digressed I didn't get on to how beautiful it is and this is Brian Kuzmar with commercial rare coins and precious metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the sea lovely day out there 75 degrees uh, yeah, man we haven't even hit our hot season yet usually this time of year it's hot as hell as as most of my local friends know and uh, uh, not yet, not yet. We're uh, we're still in our, our our cooler season. We have two seasons here: cooler and hot. <laughs> so. Uh, let's move into my screenshot. It's going to be a pretty quick show today, I think. Uh, I always say that, but I seem to drag them out. My apologies for that. But uh, um, not too much in the news today. Markets are about sideways from where they were yesterday. Um, it, interestingly enough, uh, uh, it looks like uh, Europe has kind of been leading the way in precious metals. The trend seems to be Europe uh, going up and New York kind of bopping around and following it. Uh, but I'm going to go over the, the couple things today. I'm going to go over uh, uh, all the comments from yesterday's video, uh, as many as I can get through here. Uh, I'm going to uh, do best deals in gold and silver, for best deals in coins and bars, uh, what the best prices are for or the best products that I think you should buy and save yourself quite a bit of money versus other products. And I'll tell you what the most expensive and the products that you probably shouldn't buy are in coins and bars. Uh, pretty easy for me to do being on the front lines as a retail bullion seller and a wholesaler as well. Uh, so we're going to go over a couple things. Uh, first, before we get there, we're going to go over ZH0 Hedge, uh, which should be on your bookmark bar, and take a look. Not too much in precious metals here. Uh, precious metals versus Bitcoin. Uh, we we kind of went over that article yesterday. There is really no comparison between the two. And uh, Sorry about that. I need to close my door here. Um, uh, totally two different things. Uh, uh, gold and silver is about uh, wealth preservation. It's about uh, uh, preserving your wealth, and uh, uh, it's not about getting rich quick. Unfortunately, I think a lot of people that are in the cryptocurrency, uh, it's the next thing. It's the next get-rich scheme, and you have to admit, even if you're a crypto bull and you love cryptos, uh, that that it really is. It's uh, <laughs> it's the next big thing. You know what I mean? And there's always a next big thing that comes along and suckers people in. Uh, however, uh, I'm not going to uh, talk about Bitcoin today, but I'm just saying there's an article, Precious Metals versus Bitcoin. We read that yesterday, uh, and we were trying to explain the difference between Bitcoin and owning gold and silver. Uh, and if you missed yesterday's video, uh, you can take a look at it. Uh, commodity prices reach a 25-year inflection point. Uh, I've been talking about the last couple months how I believe that the next bull market is going to be in the commodities market, and it's going to go hand-in-hand -hand with inflation. Because if the commodity market goes, the cost of um, basic metals, you know, copper, iron, aluminum, the cost of oil, the cost of uh, plastics, the cost of uh, uh, all types of different metals, including gold, silver, and platinum, uh, continue to climb, this is obviously going to build into the cost of, of what it costs to buy basic products, uh, everything from food to uh, shoes to cars, uh, you name it. Uh, it's it's going to increase in price. And I think that's where we've seen. they they. I believe that the price of commodities, uh, basic commodities, have been kept down artificially for years and years and years. Uh, just my opinion, and it and it's been done by uh, uh, you know it's it's been done through marketplaces, uh, uh, you know ETFs, uh, uh, commodity, especially commodity exchanges. Uh, 
the, again, I think they've been, besides gold, silver, and platinum, I believe that they've been uh, doing rigging a lot of other markets. Um, let's take a look at some other uh, articles here. Not too much. Uh, something wicked this way. That was kind of a deceptive article because it looks like a meteorite's about to hit the earth. But no, that's not really what it's talking about. They're just talking about black swans. Uh, and kind of an interesting article um, that, that, you know, the market's so perfect right now. Everything is so high. What will be the black swan that will take down this entire uh, uh, market? It, you know, it's crazy that the uh, closing down the entire economy for the, a year uh, in 2020 uh, because of the uh, virus didn't do it, uh, didn't crash the economy. It's just amazing that it did not. It, you know, but as I've been saying for a long, long time, never underestimate the power of people that can endlessly, endlessly print money. And they do. They can endlessly print money. Um, and uh, I guess that's the new plan anyway, MMT, Modern uh, Monetary Theory, uh, where they believe that the uh, they can just endlessly print money. Uh, by the way, too, if any of you have read about MMT, monetary uh, money, or the... I screwed that up. MMT, uh, the money monetary theory or monetary money theory. Uh, it talks about how uh, uh, governments should be able to just print endlessly uh, their currency and uh, people will just accept it for what it is. Um, it's so ridiculous and so juvenile. It's not even funny. However, what MMT does kind of imply is that any other forms of money will likely be made illegal if that is an official policy worldwide uh, because of what MMT cannot put up with uh, modern, uh, I'm sorry, modern mon money, uh, uh, monetary theory, what they can't put up with is they can't put up with competition from other monies. That includes gold, silver, cryptos, uh, you name it. So what will happen at some point if that actually becomes the doctrine of our central bankers or, or the United States, MMT, uh, where, where they just endlessly print and they don't worry about printing too much, uh, they will make other t forms of money highly illegal uh, because, again, that type of policy can't can't withstand competition. It can't withstand competition with their money. Uh, again, my opinion, something wicked comes this way. I don't know how I digressed into that, but uh, a decent article. You should probably take a look at it. Looks like Germans will be electing a conservative here. Not sure what that does for precious metals. Uh, again, I kind of uh, rolled down this earlier. Um, not too much here to talk about as far as uh, uh, precious metals go or, or things that we haven't talked about so many times before. Um, same thing with GATA.org. If it's on your bookmarks bar, you probably read everything here already, including this, this article I'm going to talk about. And that's what I said. It's kind of a slow day uh, news-wise for gold, silver, and uh, platinum. Uh, and even the market seems kind of quiet and sideways today. Uh, U.S. rigs gold to defend dollar. And this is something I've talked about for a long time. You know, the, 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 the people that are, are uh, uh, the new people in uh, gold, silver, and precious metals that are just starting to learn how markets are manipulated, their first go-to is JP, JP. Everybody loves to accuse JP, and that's the first go-to when it comes to manipulation. And has JP manipulated markets? Sure they have. Sure, absolutely, without a doubt. They've been fined for it. They've been caught. Uh, so have all the other big financial institutions to some degree as well. I don't think any of them haven't had their hand in the cookie jar at some point. Uh, however, the one biggest entity in gold and silver manipulation out there, particularly gold manipulation, the biggest entity is governments. And that's something that very few people ever talk about, delve into, uh, and even know about. Um, however, GATA.org, again, uh, the, the guys that I recommend that you, you could be, because in order to play a game and win, you need to know how the game operates. And these guys will tell you how it operates. They'll tell you who the players are, who the people are rigging the market, how they do it. And once you know all this stuff, you're able to play the game much easier. Uh, so, um, so if you're thinking that JP is the only ones out there with their cans in the cookie jar, no. Uh, and, and actually, U.S. Uh, government and uh, other governments, they don't necessarily have their hands in the cookie jar. Uh, they're just trying to protect their fiat money. They want to keep the gold for themselves, and they want to pass off the paper to you and our friends and our family and to other people around the world. Uh, so let me take a, a quick read on this, uh, and it's actually a, a video that you can watch down here. It looks like it's 56 minutes long, but in a nutshell, I'm going to read this. Um, Chris explains why gold is manipulated. Since governments want to control and monopol monopolize currencies, and that's what I just talked about, gold is an independent global reserve system, and it has acts as a competitor to government monetary insurance. Central banks for the past half century have strived to control the gold price. Absolutely true, folks. Control of gold is a power to control the value of capital, labor, goods, and service 
services worldwide. I don't think many people understand the power of gold. And, and again, think about it. The people that print dollars, euros, uh, uh, pesos, you name it, the people that print these fiat currencies, central bankers, um, they own gold, folks. They own uh, large amounts of gold. So why do they own gold? And again, and they're pushing paper fiat on you and telling you not to own gold. What's up with that? Make any sense to you? Doesn't make sense to me. So really, um, uh, you have to know the, the influence and the power of gold over currencies. Uh, and it has a little something to do with Gresham's Law. You know, uh, good money will push bad money out. And uh, more or less, that's true. So gold swaps and leasing have enabled central banks to create a vast imaginary supply of gold, Chris says. Most of the gold the investment community owns either doesn't exist or is oversubscribed. Uh, we've talked about this for years with the ETFs, especially with LNBA, and especially with COMEX. Do they have the precious metals to cover those contracts? No, they do not. Uh, do, they, do the ETFs really own the gold and silver to cover uh, their ETFs? Hmm, questionable, highly questionable. Uh, and, and not by people with tinfoil hats, by very smart people, like the people at GATA.org here. Um, if the market understood central bank actions in the gold market, valuations would have to change. The question is, who owns the gold and how much do they have? So there's a limited amount of gold out there. And uh, uh, one of the things that Gata talks about, and you'll see in the articles here, is how, the, how whether it's the U.S. government or uh, other central bankers loaning gold, especially in London, loaning gold uh, to be leased and you know so people can borrow it. How many people borrowed that gold? So and this is what they mean by who owns the gold and how much do they have? Uh, Chris discusses a hearing of the U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission at which metals consultant Jeff Christian, God, I don't know how he found that. He must have remembered it too because that goes back a decade at least, I think, uh, that uh, uh, hearing. Uh, and I remember it too because I actually watched it on a video. Um, so uh, let me get into this. Chris discusses a, a hearing of the U.S. Commodities Futures Trading Commission at which metals consultancy executive Jeff Christian estimated the leverage in the gold market, now this is over a decade, decade ago, estimated the leverage in the gold market at nearly 100 to 1, which means that for every ounce of gold, there was like 100 customers that claimed they own it. Um, oh boy, there goes that phone. Sorry folks, I put it far enough away, but maybe you can still hear it. <laughs> uh, my apology. Uh, so, the Reserve Bank of India estimates the leverage at 92 to 1, so at least 100 to 1. And again, this is a decade ago uh, when this gentleman, Jeff Christian, uh, said this in a video uh, that I had watched. So, uh, it, it's probably even worse now, in my opinion. Uh, Chris explains the closing of the U.S. gold window in 1971. This is something that you and I are familiar with. We talk about this often. And a possible intent for the creation of gold futures market to scare investors away from gold. And absolutely, the investors world does the same thing. They don't want people owning gold uh, because once you have gold in your hands, they're not making commissions. That's why the investment world uh, and brokers, you know, uh, stockbrokers and such, uh, Wall Street Journal and Bloomberg and CNB, that's why they hate precious metals uh, because once you bought it, you're in. Uh, you got nobody churning your accounts. You got no mutual funds going on there. You got uh, gold. Uh, the gold sitting in your box is not going to pay advertising for Bloomberg <laughs> or buy any advertising for Bloomberg. Maybe gold dealers like myself will. Uh, so that may not necessarily be true. But no less, um, they hate stocks. They hate, I mean, they hate gold. They hate uh, metals. And they always have. And you can tell by the way they write about it and the fact that they never bring in real experts. They bring in faux experts that trash it. And then when they do bring in the occasional expert uh, like Peter Schiff, and by the way, I know there's a few people out there that are mad at Peter Schiff, but I'll get into that in comments. Uh, so, much of the world is not thrilled with the U.S. dollar system since it controls most of the value today and is a primary instru instrument of U.S. imperialism. Wow, this guy's talking about everything that we've talked about for quite, quite some time, is that the U.S. dollar during the Bretton Woods Agreement after World War II, and this is something I've talked about a hundred times, I'm going to bore some of my regular guys with this, and ladies, uh, talking about this, but uh, um, more or less, uh, the, the United States currency was the world global reserve currency. We all agreed to it. The whole, all, A lot of countries agreed to it. Uh, yeah. Even Russians, even the Venezuelans, even the Chinese who did not like the United States or had reasons not to like the United States, even our enemies when we had the Vietnam War, uh, Viet Cong would be found with U.S. dollars in their pockets. So the dollar was all over the world until, until we weaponized it. 
And the weaponization of the dollar began decades ago when we started uh, uh, putting sanctions on countries. I'm not just talking about sanctions and allowing ships to go into their ports. I'm talking about cutting them out of the U.S. banking system. And as soon as we did that, the writing was on the wall for Russia, China, and all these other countries that said, you know what, if America's got an issue with us one day, they're going to cut us out of the dollar system. We're dead. So what did they start doing? They started in inventing their own uh, currency systems. They started figuring out ways to circumvent the U.S. dollar like the Chinese have, like the Russians have, uh, like the Venezuelans tried to do, and like, uh, remember Gaddafi uh, tried to do as well, and he ended up with a knife in his bum. Um, so, uh, uh, and, and what Gaddafi ended up really dying for is he was trying to uh, de-dollarize Africa and Libya. And that's, you know, and there's facts, there's proof about that. Uh, he was trying to do a gold-backed Libyan dollar uh, that was going to be traded in Libya. I think that has more to do with his death than uh, whatever they claimed it had been. Uh, but no less, uh, Gaddafi, for example, in Libya, we'd weaponize the dollar against all these people. And again, the big countries like China and uh, uh, other countries like Russia and, and countries that we may not necessarily get along with, they know that it has. They saw it years ago. So that is why they built their own system. That is why the dollar is in a decline. That is why our dollar empire is in a decline. The dollar is not going to be the world uh, currencies at some point. Uh, and again, why? Because of our politicians. Uh, weaponized it. And that's their fault. And really, in essence, it's our fault because we put them there. We put these people in power. Uh, and, you know, in the future, we need to start spending more money, more time reading about who we're putting in power and what the hell they know and what they don't know. Because most of the people we put in the power for the last few decades all over the world, including this country, um, seem to be economically morons, in my opinion. Uh, Chris outlines a very useless um, oh, hang on a second. Uh, here we go. Chris outlines the very uses uh, for silver and notes. The metal is also in the industrial one. Silver could be the kryptonite to central bankers and governments because it's widely held, he says. That I don't get. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to watch the interview after all, like you folks. <laughs> I thought I was going to do the short end of this, but I can't quite get why he thinks that silver could be the kryptonite to central bankers as opposed to gold. Um, but kind of interesting. Chris argues that gold price suppression is used to control interest rates. Ordinarily, there's an inverse relation between real interest rates and gold, and the gold carry trade acted as a, mechan a mechanism of yield curve control. Um, and, and which is true. However, uh, the idea that real interest rates are going to affect, first off, real interest rates are, are if, you, if, if you're talking about real, real interest rates, um, they're in the negative still big time. If you're talking about what the government statistics show real interest rates and what Wall Street is operating and what the media and the politicians are operating, that's a bullshit statistic right there. Um, the CPI is a bullshit statistic actually as well. And most of all, people that said that uh, five years ago, even uh, we're, we were called tinfoil hat wearers, but now we're seeing the evidence that uh, the CPI, uh, the uh, uh, real interest rates that are figured by uh, a government, uh, uh, what they tell us real interest rates are, are total bullshit. Uh, again, I digress. I think it's a good article you should probably listen to. Uh, again, I'm curious how Chris says that uh, silver is going to be the real kryptonite to governments. Uh, let's move into spot prices right now. Um, and uh, not much, again, the news was pretty quick there, I think, although I have a way of making it long, so I do apologize. Let me refresh the screen uh, and see what we got going on here. Uh, not too much, kind of sideways. Take a look at the overnight action here, 1764. Uh, though that's New York, uh, 1766 uh, to 1774, so like a $10 range. He's hanging in that 1770 range. I noticed that, uh, as someone uh, had mentioned trends, if you can kind of see little trends or you start to see patterns form. I noticed the recent pattern is going back to what was in the past, uh, where it looked like the overnight markets, European markets, maybe London, I'm not sure, uh, uh, markets, but the markets before New York opened uh, have been higher which has been leading to a little higher markets in New York, but New York doesn't seem to be leading the way as far as uh, prices going up in precious metals. It seems to be uh, the overnight markets that are, uh, are, are going up more, and uh, New York is begrudgingly following that. That's just my opinion, what, it, you know, what I see as a pattern here going on. Uh, same thing applies to silver and platinum. Uh, 2579 to 2599. So, you know, just below that $26 mark and uh, platinum hanging on to that 1200. 
Uh, I like metals right now. Someone called me and asked me if it's still a great price. You know, is it still okay to buy at these levels? Of course it is. I think anything below $2,000 gold you're going to look at one day. Depends on how long you get to live. You know, my friend asked me, well, yeah, I, you know, and, and I, I said to him, I said, well, you know, it depends on how long you plan on being around. He was actually in the hospital, too. I hope he's okay. Uh, he said, well, I don't know. I'll know later on today. Uh, but I told him, I said, Greg, uh, listen, I, I still think, you know, if you plan on being around for any length of time, uh, normal time uh, for a human being, um, uh, and I, I don't want to pick out short terms because you can be a hero or a zero when it comes to short terms. That's what gets Peter Schiff in trouble or had gotten him in trouble, uh, and, he, and he still catches flack over that. Uh, but no less, I don't like short-term predictions, although even though I do the coin toss in the morning and keep saying bull, and even though I'll tell you that I think we're going to have an up market this week, and I think we are, um, it's just that's just a guess. That's just an opinion. Uh, but no less, medium to long term, there's no doubt in my mind gold and silver and, and, and those prices are going to go up. Uh, I, I, there's no way I could be wrong on this. Impossible. Um, and I know that sounds uh, pretty bold to say that, but it's absolutely true. Medium long term, uh, anything below $2,000 gold is fantastic. Anything below $30 silver is fantastic. Anything below um, the uh, $1,300 uh, platinum is fantastic, in my opinion. I believe we'll look back at these prices one day and go, oh my God, I wish I bought more. And, and you know what? You can say that. Uh, 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 throughout the history of gold and silver. If you go back far enough, you can always, God, I wish I bought more. We'll never see $100 gold again. We'll never see $3 silver again. We'll never see uh, uh, $500 gold again. We'll never see, uh, you know, the $10 silver. Uh, so, I mean, think about that. Just think about what gold and silver, they just continuously climb over time, uh, though they do have choppy movements. You know, they can be down for a period of time as well. But I think we're heading back into our bull market. We've already been in a, a slow move bull market for since 2016 uh, so just keep buying folks as long as you're not paying too much you're cool um, as far as premiums go and premiums are high so as soon as I'm done with this uh, answering questions here I'm gonna get into what the best deals of the day are and which are not and then we'll end this video um, Savoy Truffle says the quick quickest way to discredit cryptos is spam the hell out of every metals channel with your BS man uh, since I've been doing this I never had issues until recently I keep getting this uh, uh, somebody, I don't know if it's one person or multiple person that keeps like posting. Uh, it's weird. I'm not used to this on YouTube. I'm kind of a new YouTuber, but uh, uh, it's uh, uh, strange. I go on there and I see some lady. It looks like some little old nice lady and she's going, well, crypto should be part of your investment. So I'm looking at it and saying, oh, that sounds like, you know, I'm not going to delete that. It sounds normal. All of a sudden, she'll get 60 responses below. Mr. Yo, I love cryptos too. I made a fortune. And then the last couple messages will say, who did you get your, and it'll, say, it'll give a phone number. I'm like, gosh, darn. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I've seen that. i seen that. I don't know where they come from, but I try to delete them as fast as I go up, uh, 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 Savoy Truffle. Uh, Prepper Day says, pattern seems to buy on SmackDown Monday and sell on High Friday. Uh, I thought of you when I was just talking about trends, Prepper Days, because uh, um, that's true. If you can spot trends and you can spot little movements that seem to be patterns, uh, you're better for it. Again, it's knowing how the game is played and watching these patterns is part of that. Uh, so, uh, uh, But as far as the SmackDown on Mondays, I, don't, I think we did see a period of SmackDowns. Uh, however, I don't think it was just on Mondays, but uh, uh, there did seem to be a pattern of SmackDowns on Mondays, which is kind of unusual, about a month ago, three weeks or a month ago and past. Uh, but I believe that's over for now, sir or ma'am. Uh, Beto D says, I'm doing it for long-term wealth preservation. Uh, that's about yesterday's video. Uh, thanks for watching, Beto. Uh, Peter Schiff is a Perth uh, spokesman, Platinum Piler says. I'll never listen to him after what he said uh, to hold unallocated silver at Perth. What a sellout. Um, you know, I don't know Platinum uh, Piler. I'm not a, uh, uh, you know, Peter gets a lot of flack against some of the things he said. He's very bold in the statements. Uh, but as far as the Perth Mint goes, I think Perth Mint, uh, gold and silver, it's a fine company. Um, their, their their mint master made some stupid, ridiculous comments about the silver squeeze. You know, uh, you guys should stick to minting coins, not talking about shit he doesn't know about. Uh, but no less, I think the Perth Mint's a fine company. As far as unallocated and allocated accounts, you know, if I had to trust anybody 
for an unallocated account, it would probably be a big mint like Perth. No less, I am not a fan of unallocated accounts. You are not a fan of unallocated accounts, Platinum Piler. Uh, but I think Peter is maybe a little bit. Uh, again, I haven't seen that video. I didn't see him tell. Uh, so if you give me a link to that, that would be kind of cool. I'd like to hear it myself. Uh, but again, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Peter Schiff is a very intelligent man. Knows the banking system, knows gold and silver. Um, you know, is he a sellout because he said buy unallocated silver at Perth? Didn't, don't know, didn't see the quote, didn't read it. Uh, so again, if you get a chance, um, post a link to that Platinum Parlor and I'll, I'll let you know what I think. But I, I think Peter's an extremely smart man uh, and I would definitely listen to him. Um, again, don't know about the unallocated part. Uh, and so I can't comment on that. Uh, Mark Petter says, always look forward to listening to your thoughts since I found your channel. I'm getting ready to invest more in the precious metal. One of your thoughts on silver or gold. Um, I'd be around 50K and have about 50, 100. Um, here, keep the number of ounces that you have, sir, and your name on there. All about security. Please uh, delete this. <laughs> I don't want people to know how much you have or anything like that. It's kind of cool. But uh, uh, I, did a, uh, I did a video a while back ago on security and stuff like that. And security, I think it's kind of be nice to be quiet on what you actually own. Um, but no less, uh, that's a nice substantial sum, sir. And, uh, um, you know, it's hard to say should you buy more silver, more gold. Uh, I like the security of gold. I like the fact that gold has a more reasonable premium, it seems, on bars right now. Uh, I like the fact that gold, you can carry it around. Uh, and, but gold has broken its all-time high, you know, how many times already? Uh, and silver has yet to break its two-time all-time high, 2012 and uh, uh, 1980. But it's not fair to uh, uh, look at 1980 because 1980, $50 silver would be like, because of the dollar, would be like uh, $500 silver today. Uh, so our last uh, $50 silver market was in 2012. Uh, so I think, in my opinion, if I was going to be a little more riskier and uh, um, uh, want the bigger upshot, the bigger chance of making more money, I think silver has the bigger chance of hitting its all-time high here soon. Uh, uh, and again, it, that would be a double up. Uh, where is gold going from here? I just don't know. I mean, is gold going to hit $2,500? I think it's going to easily hit $2,500, in my opinion, again. Uh, but again, I digress here. Let me move on to a couple other things. Uh, and Mark says he's not wanting to get rich. Uh, he just wants to preserve his wealth. 100% agree with you. Cowboy. I don't know what a cowboy is, but <laughs> I know what a cowboy is, but don't know what the reference is there. Thanks for watching. Yes. And uh, Freeman says truth is the only way, the way of God. Um, yeah, truth is the only way, sir. I agree 100%. Uh, Himhan says stocks, precious metals, crypto, why not diversify and have money in each of these? Absolutely. Diversification is cool, man. Um, I think if you, I know the precious metal markets, uh, Mr. Himhan. Uh, I don't know stocks and cryptos very well. I know enough to be dangerous, and that's probably enough to lose money in those markets. Uh, you know, again, that's, I have found that uh, I, if I stick with what I know, I usually do pretty damn good. Uh, if I go into other areas, I risk. Uh, but again, no no risk, no gain, too. So I get that part of it. So yeah, I think diversification is the best thing. And when I hear people are going to dump all their money, gold and silver, even I say, no. Uh, hey, thanks for watching. Uh, Jan in USA, Florida says, you may not remember the news report a couple years about China on a gold mine buying spree. Uh, yeah, I do, actually. Uh, uh, China has been uh, propping up their gold reserves for quite some time. A few years ago, people were speculating. China was not releasing how much gold they have. Uh, and again, I think China expects to be the economic world superpower if if and i kind of doubt it because all these countries love fiat and they're going to keep the fiats even china you know who doesn't love printing money endlessly and not backing by anything however i think china has the ability to back their currency uh, back gold back yuan uh, at some point and if they do that you know as far as the u.s being a world economic global currency goodbye goodbye uh, and that's very bad for us Americans and people holding U.S. dollars. Uh, Silver Seeker says, appreciate the information you share, Brian. Thank you. Thank you for watching, sir. Uh, Jigsaw Jazz says, geez, for such a small channel, you're attracting scammers and crypto pumpers. Oh, man, I know. I know. I'll, it'll be on this show, too. Trust me. I'll spend the first couple hours knocking these guys out on the comment section. Um, I'm stacking for wealth preservation. Great on you, Jeff Gills. Um, and uh, Mr. Benoit uh, uh, again, I'm sorry, it's the French name, I believe, and I don't want to torture it. I think it's more than security or get rich. It's a political vote that makes you, yeah, there's a lot to what you say. Man, you, you come up with some really heavy stuff, Benoit. Uh, and I, again, forgive me if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Uh, and I always like reading your comments on here. Uh, in fact, I can't read the whole thing, but 
Um, for you folks watching right now, uh, do me a favor, just stop right now and take a read uh, what he's saying here and make some comments as well. Uh, he always brings up some really good points. Uh, thanks for commenting. Thanks for watching as well, sir. And please, someone let me know how to pronounce his name properly. And I do apologize. You know, I'm no genius when it comes to uh, 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 um, being able to pronounce names. Uh, Nick M., please tone down the coin. I did, Nick. Let me know how it was. Thanks for watching, sir. Uh, now we ride. There's so many people saying stacking sovereign coins. Uh, sovereign's a great way. Sovereign's one of the oldest bullion coins uh, in history. I mean, it's a quarter ounce, 0.23. Five, four ounces, I believe, um, almost a quarter ounce. Been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, if you can pick them up at a good, you know, a premium that's not too stiff, I'd say melt plus no more than maybe twenty-five, thirty dollars. Um, you're probably doing pretty good there. So buy them if you can. They're certainly a lot cheaper than gold eagles and uh, quarter ounce maples and the other uh, uh, products. Uh, now we ride. Uh, oh, uh, oh, thanks for watching. Uh, FDM text, love your show. Help me acquire more silver. Hey, that's great. Thanks for watching, sir. I appreciate it. Let me know if I can help you with anything else. Uh, Sepi and R says, you keep saying buy local. What if I can buy cheaper online than local? Well, uh, then do it. Then do it. And as I've said, if you watch my shows, I always advertise uh, that I will beat the three biggies, who I consider the three big ones, SD Bullion, JM Bullion, Atmex. I could add more on there, but I'm going to keep it to three. I will beat their prices. They're big, reputable online sellers. Uh, and I always recommend to my uh, viewers, uh, if you don't live near me and you can't do business with me and you can't benefit from buying cheaper than you can buy online and cheaper than you can buy from my local competitors, uh, then you're kind of stuck looking for a local deal yourself. If you can't find somebody, and I, I recommend driving up to an hour, you know, stay, keep the money in your state at least if you can, make a trip. Uh, uh, but if you can't find anybody that's competitive, and uh, I, I wouldn't also hesitate to go into a dealer and ask him what his prices are and say, listen, I want to be a consistent buyer. Can you get closer to the online seller's prices and I'll buy directly from you? You can order the product if you want. Um, ask. Don't hesitate to ask your local dealers too. And if they say no and you can't find anybody, by all means, sir, you, you should go online and buy from these people because you need to own gold, silver, and platinum. Uh, and if you can't find a good local dealer, hey, you're, you're kind of stuck dealing with the online guys. And I shouldn't say stuck, uh, but again, I'm big on local, buying local because it keeps the money local. And uh, keeping the money local is very important for our communities, especially in these times, folks. Uh, Enjoy says, uh, I don't care for Sal. Uh, oh, I didn't mean to read that, actually. Enjoy, I get it. You know, the thing with, uh, I, I like Sal, uh, um, you know, some salivate metals. Uh, again, good passion, good heart. He's got his own opinion, and that's cool. You know, the nice thing about the YouTube is that there's probably 6,000 commenters out there on precious metals, gold and silver, and I'm sure there's someone out there for everybody. You know, I've got my own little crew here, too, I guess, going on, and uh, I appreciate you all, by the way. Uh, so, uh, um, you know, there's a lot of good guys out there, and again, they have their own opinions, and that's what they are, opinions. You know, we're, none of us are probably investment advisors. Uh, very few of the guys out there are actual dealers like me that have been doing this for 40 years. Uh, so, uh, uh, again, a lot of experience out there, a lot of, uh, uh, I don't know how much experience, I shouldn't say that, but a lot of, a lot of opinions out there. And, um, and a lot of the ones I see, a lot of people have heart, and they have passion for this business. And even if they get it wrong, I appreciate what they're doing. I really do. Uh, uh, Enjoy says, I listened to Ship and didn't care for his recent uh, defense of Perth. Uh, again, I answered that a little bit earlier. Thanks for watching, Enjoy Silver. I really appreciate it. If there's anything I can do for you, let me know. Uh, Michael Matthews says, what refiners do you recommend? Do you have any knowledge of uh, reliable ones? Uh, the problem with refiners is that a real refiner is not accessible by uh, the general public. Uh, the refiner I use is uh, a metal ore, and metal ore is probably, they're a Japanese Swiss company. They're, they're, they're global. They're all over the world. Um, so um, they're, they're everywhere, more or less. Uh, and you, it took me almost a year to become a customer of theirs. Uh, I had to uh, spend two or three thousand dollars on on uh, legal stuff uh, to learn how not to deal with terrorists and you know the whole Patriot bullshit and stuff. And I won't say BS, but uh, all that stuff, uh, having a compliance officer. Uh, so I was required to do that. And Metalor, uh, the refiner, literally flew down a representative and an attorney from Chicago to Florida to come visit me to see that I was on the up and up. That is how hard it is to get in with a good, legit refiner. Trust me. So the general public can't do that. The best you can hope for, Michael, is to meet a guy like me or find someone that is hooked up with a local refiner and that will give you a good deal. 
Uh, you know, if you're getting to the point where you're dealing in thousands, thousands and thousands, my silver, I have to send 55 gallon drums filled with silver to just meet the qualification to deal with them. So if that gives you an idea, anyone that says they're, they're a real refiner and they didn't make you go through that process and uh, they don't have a minimum of thousands of ounces and 100 ounces of pure gold, they're not a real refiner, trust me. There's so many people out there that call themselves refiners and they're not. What they do is they open up a little place uh, somewhere, you know, in your town. Uh, they have a little melting pot back there. They melt all the gold in, a, in like a little bar and then they take slices or drillings and they put it on their X-ray, XRF machine like I have in my store. And then they, they it with, has a 1% error rate. And then they say, oh, here's what I'll pay. But they're not refiners. You know what they do after they buy it from you? They send it to Metal Ore. So <laughs> if they have an account with uh, a refiner. Some of them don't even have accounts. Um, thanks for asking that. And I'm sure some people found that interesting. Just Chad Sewart says, I almost never buy metals in my st state. Illinois can burn it out. <laughs> well, sir, I might not disagree with you. I've met a lot of fine people from Illinois, but as far as their government goes, I, oh gosh, it, it's a it's a shit show in my opinion. So I would agree. Uh, and plus, you guys got sales tax and all kinds of crap in Illinois. Illinois is the worst when it comes to sales tax on bullion. So yeah, if you're getting stuck in your state with sales tax, uh, that is the one time I might advise you to buy online if you're not being charged sales tax. Uh, and that's my opinion. Uh, gee, hey, nice to see you again. Hey, make sure you're in Dubai, man. That sounds so cool. I'd like to talk to you about that. If you're ever in Fort Lauderdale or Miami, uh, look me up, sir. We'll go have a drink or, or, or lunch or something like that. like to hear your experiences out there. Um, well, that's it for the uh, video comment section. I'm going to get into what I told you I was going to do. Uh, this first what are the best deals out there and what are the worst deals well you're gonna hate me for saying this worst deals are gold american eagles next worst deals are going to be maple leafs uh Krugerans are going to be the least of the worst deals and i'm not sure about australian kangaroos availability and the rest of it but the three big products in the united states would be Krugerans, maple leafs and uh, uh gold eagles and buffaloes too by the way i don't see a buffalo on here but uh almost all these products uh up the top of the page here on popular gold uh, uh products are well over in, in Austria. I love Austrian Philharmonics, but they're just not available lately. But all these products are well over $100 premium over the price of gold, no matter where you go to buy them. Uh, Krugerrands are probably close to $100 over if you can find them. Not quite sure about those, but uh, there's much better deals out here than buying any of these products I'm showing you right here. Unless you can buy these products for $100 or less premium per ounce, uh, don't buy them. They're overpriced, as beautiful as they are. Uh, next, overpriced products and the products you shouldn't buy in silver, same thing. Uh, you shouldn't buy silver eagles, you shouldn't buy silver maples, you shouldn't buy well, silver buffaloes. That's a collectible coin, so that's not really a bullion item. Or silver uh, uh, philharmonics. Uh, none of these products are under $5 an ounce. In fact, uh, silver eagles are just insane in their price. Love the product, hate the premium. Uh, same thing with maples and the other products. Uh, so, you know, if you're buying these products and you're in, you're, you're probably paying well over $5 an ounce premium and it's too much folks. It's just too much as much as I love them. Uh, let me show you what the best deals out there to buy. Stick with us 90% silver coin. Number one, uh, it's the cheapest product out there. It's made by the same people that make silver Eagles right here. Uh, they make this stuff, the U S mint. It's 90%. It's ugly. It's uninteresting. It's dirty. It's got glue on it like that one does right there. However, it has got the cheapest premium. And it's what we call constitutional money. And another beautiful part of it is it's fractionals. You're not going to pay a big premium for fractionals. What other gold and silver products do you get for a cheap price and you don't have to pay an exorbitant premium for fractionals? 90%. I'm showing it to you right now. You can break it down to a dime even. The beauty of 90% too in Florida, no sales tax on any amount. You can buy one dime, no sales tax. Beautiful product, folks. Highly recommend it. Um, next to that, I would say your next best bet is silver bars if you can find them for less than $5 an ounce premium. If they're over $5 an ounce premium, stick with the 90 until it's out, and then you're kind of stuck like me buying higher premium products. I'll let you know what the next best deals once this stuff runs out. Uh, same thing with gold. I, as I told you, anything over $100 an ounce premium is too much. Gold Eagles, um, uh, Maples, if you can get KRs for 100 bucks, even over spot, fine. If you're paying 110, 120, I recommend don't buy them. Certainly don't buy Gold Eagles at 180. Uh, again, that's just insane. These products are just insane. If you get the KRs for 100 bucks over, great. Maybe 105, 110 at the most. But again, paying 130, 140, and up to $200 over 
over for maples and eagles. That's insane, folks. Don't do it. Trust me, don't do it. Buy the uh, uh, buy the cheaper bars right now. You can get them for anywhere from eighty to hundred dollars over spot uh, from us, depending on the quantities that you're buying from online. Probably about the same. Well, I got through this show, darn it, and uh, I really appreciate all you watching. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Waterdale by the Sea. Call me anytime at 954-493-8811 between the hours of 10 a.m., 4 p.m., Mondays through Fridays. I've been in this location since 1995. I've been doing this full-time, not full-time, I'm sorry. I, I started part-time in 1977 working for my family business, so I've got a lot of experience in this field, folks. If you need me for anything, don't hesitate to call me if you're in my local area. Happy to deal with you. If you don't live in my local area, um, and I don't mind getting calls from you folks, and I kind of encourage them, but please call after 4 p.m. when I'm not working with my local customers because, again, I can't deal with anybody out of state. I don't do any shipping. I don't do any online sales. Uh, so, But I don't mind answering questions to my peeps that are listening outside my area. Hey, thanks for watching again. Have yourself a wonderful day. Uh, don't forget to check out my other videos. Hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. And uh, here's my uh, actual reviews. I got some good reviews out there, too. Uh, like I said, thanks for watching. Anything crazy happens today, I'll do another video. If not, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye now.